Okay, welcome back everyone. For this episode, we have an old friend of mine, Twiggy. Twiggy and I have known each other off and on for quite a few years, and it was really great doing this um, podcast with her. She hasn't changed. She's hardly changed at all. And it was just a delight doing this little chat with her. Yeah, so full disclosure, if, uh, if there are fans of Twiggy uh, who are watching this, they probably heard the episode that she did with Patty. It was a few weeks ago now. And the plan was that we were going to have this episode out first and she beat us to it. So apologies for that. We're a few weeks behind, but we're here now and um, it's a brilliant episode. So we hope you enjoy it. This is Cocktails with Patty and Twiggy. Welcome, Twiggy. Hello, thank, gorgeous. Diane, How are you? Thank you for coming to do my podcast. Oh, thank you for having and me. And we did a deal, didn't we? Yeah. If you do my podcast, I'll do yours. Yeah. So like school days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'll show, I'll show you mine if you show me yours. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Slightly different. <laughs> No, it's lovely to say, gosh, how long have we known? I was saying to Lee, my husband, this morning, I can't, I'm trying to think the first time we actually met. I don't know. Can you remember? No, but I was... My brain is so... I was remembering... A long time ago. ...how I first heard of you. I was modelling at the time, and I was on a plane to Paris, Mm -hmm. and I opened the Daily Express, which I must have had, and why I know it's a Daily Express, I have no idea. And there was a photograph of you, the new model, and I, and you just had your hair cut by Leonard. And I thought, my That's God, nice. this girl is amazing. <laughs> and then after that, I don't know when we met. No, it must have been. Well, that was 66, that article, that February 66. I don't think we met that early. No, but we, we met sometime later. we did work together later. a few times. I think it was a little bit later. And I can remember coming to your house... In Isha. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. So when, when did you live there? From 63 till about 70. Okay. So it must have been after 66, obviously, because... So I would think we probably met 68, 69, 67, Amazing. something Amazing. like that. Wow. How soon one forgets. But I, I just feel like I've always known you. Yes, I funny. And I, I feel think the we, same. We just got on immediately, didn't we? Yeah, we did. In fact, we. I had always a... envied your, you. Ha, you have the best legs in the business. Oh, really? and I used to be upset because my leg. I mean, hence my name. Uh, my legs are always so skinny, and oh. yours are long and slim, but very lovely shape. And I always used to say, "Oh, I wish I had Patty's legs." <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so funny what we wish for. I know, isn't it? I know. Well, don't you think all teenagers? If, oh. if you're small, you want to be tall. If you're shapely, you want to be thin. And if, if you've got blonde hair, you want to be dark. dark. If you're curly, you want straight. I mean, yes. I've never met a teenager yet who's actually... No one's <laughs> happy. happy with the way they No look. one is happy with what they've got. Do you think this is why we like to drink cocktails? Because oh. we're not content with being sober. Well, cocktails certainly help every situation, don't they? <laughs> Now, Twigs, I know <coughs> that your favourite cocktail is a margarita because mm-hmm. it takes you back to the days when you were working in New York. Yeah, I, it was my d- drink. I, I, I have them occasionally now, being the good girl that I am, but um, when I was doing my one and only on Broadway, which I did for nearly two years, which was a big musical... My were you tap tre- dancing in this? Oh, yeah. yeah. Tap so you were dancing, tap dancing, singing. singing. It was okay. called My One and Only. And it was all Gershwin music, so it was gorgeous. And, um, but, you know, work out every night. I mean, I always say to people, if you want to get fit, if you want to lose weight, do a musical. Because <laughs> oh. you just keep so fit. Yeah. Um, and you can eat whatever you like and drink, well, well to, a, to a certain extent, drink whatever you like. But my treat at the end of the evening of doing, you know, a two and a half hour show was to go out to eat, sometimes with mates who'd been to see the show, but sometimes with one of the other cast members. But my first thing would be a margarita. 
Okay, and that was, was this... my treat of the night. So New York was your introduction to margaritas, really? Yes, it was. Yeah. Because my co-star, Tommy Tune, that's what he drank. Oh. Because I was really, I mean, I wasn't a big drinker. I've never been a big drinker, but I, I kind of, by then, I never drank in my teens and I never drank in my early 20s, really. I mean, I remember, the, <laughs> I digress a bit, but the first time I went to Paris, you know, I was seven, 16 and a half. Wow. You know, and in Neasden, you, you didn't drink alcohol. <laughs> my dad had a beer at, at Christmas and my mum had a sherry. That was it. <laughs> and the rest of the year, it was tea or ginger beer from the Corona Man. That was it. And ginger beer was non-alcoholic, as you know. So I didn't really drink. But, but, but by the time I got to New York, I was in my early 30s. I'd kind of gone on to, a little bit to wine. Yeah. But my co-star in my one and only, Tommy Tune, who put it together and was the director and everything, he drank margaritas. So he introduced me to them and I, I, I fell instantly in love. <laughs> oh, good, yeah. I so understand that too. But tell me, how do you make your margarita? Well, I think there's various ways of doing them. You can, you can have frozen ones, mm -hmm. which I don't particularly like because they're so cold. And they're they're like, too cold. They're mushy. Yeah, they're like those things kids buy that they're are pink bright. and blue, and, but they've got alcohol in. Yes. And you almost have to eat them. They're like, yeah. a, they're like a sorbet almost. I don't like that. I don't like. No, mine, my I do, I, you get, you do, well, for one, I do 50 ml of tequila. Mm. I prefer white tequila. Yes. You can do it with, with gold, but I find that a bit strong. I think the there's, a, there's a smoky tequila as well. No, I don't like Which that. doesn't work. No. But the white tequila has got a much cleaner taste, mm. I think. Because I actually don't really like the taste of alcohol. No. So with the you, so you, you like what it does to you, but yeah, not, that little but not buzz, how it tastes. But not too many. <laughs> <laughs> I, always, <laughs> I always say that you know two cocktails are enough. Oh, Three no. is very no, tempting, no. but it could be a bit of a mistake. Yeah, for me definitely. I'm a cheap drunk, I'm afraid, or maybe good. Um, Fifty ml of tequila to one and a half tablespoons of fresh squeezed lime juice. That's really important. It has yeah. to be the, not the one that you buy in the bottle. No, no, no. Hateful. It's got to be, yeah, hateful. Um, a t tablespoon of triple sec, which gives it the sweetness. Yeah. And you can vary it to your taste if you want it a bit stronger or a bit sweeter. And then the other important thing is, um, and the easiest way to do it, if you put s a table salt on a glass, um, on a, a, um, a hey. saucer, Yeah and dampen the rim of the glass with water and then dip your upside down glass in the salt it'll stick, stick to it and then obviously before you put your mixture in and you do i just mix mine in yeah <laughs> that's it all fall out <laughs> I, I mix mine in a blender yes you know, just loosely and then yeah. you pour it in and it's so delicious oh god it's twiggy so let's have a cheers yeah, now we've made cheers one. to tequila very yeah naughty. love cheers, it cheers, love cheers, it cheers, cheers, cheers. Mm. oh that's so good now i once made the mistake as you said i'm i it was obviously a good night and i had two and when i went to stand up my knees had gone all wonky <laughs> So I only ever had one before, after that. You forget how strong um, our, um, you know, cocktails are. Because you're having so much fun mm. and everything seems possible. I know. Now, darling, I remember many, many years ago, I only remember this because I saw a photo recently of you and me on a Greek island. We were obviously on holiday, but then you reminded me of the story. <laughs> Come on, tell it. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> oh gosh, it was it was all it was slightly embarrassing as well, wasn't it? Well, you very sweetly rang me up one day and said, "We're go I'm going on holiday. You were married to George, lovely George Harrison, and you and George were gonna. Ha you'd rented this beautiful yacht in the Greek islands to go on holiday, and then George couldn't come. S suddenly, he was going in the studio, and." Um, and he was taking his family, which was lovely. So you rang and said, look, George can't come. And I'm going with George's family, which is fine. His mum, his dad, his brother. brother would it? Yeah, brother and brother's wife. And a couple of kids, I think. Yes. I mean, it's a long time. This must have been, what, 60? Well, it would have been mid-60s or late-60s. Yeah. Anyway, so we must have known each other by then. 
So you very sweetly said, it'd be nice for me, you, to have a couple of mates. Would you like to come? So me and my then fella said, thank you very much. I mean, going on a yacht in the Greek island sounded delicious with you. Anyway, we were, it was fine and the family were lovely and we, had a, we were having a lovely time. And then it was Mykonos, that picture you're talking about. Yes. And um, you, me and my boyfriend got off the yacht and went, you know... Went, we went for a Went shopping. Drink. Shopping or a drink or something. Or something, or, or a meal. Yeah. And somehow, well, they weren't called paparazzi then, were they? But no, a photographer but... got a snap of us yes. walking off the yacht and obviously sold it around the world because it, it appeared all in the European papers. Next and the day. next day, the captain, who was so proud because there was a picture of his yacht in the, in, the, in the Greek papers, but he translated and he put it on the breakfast table <laughs> and said, oh, look, and it says, Twiggy arrives on her yacht in Mykonos. <laughs> oh, my God. And that's when it all hit the, hit the pan, so to speak, because... Um, well, especially George's mum was very offended that um, it said it was my yacht. <laughs> oh, that's right. She got she got she really got cross very, with you. Very very upset because I, we hadn't spoken to the press, had we? No, that was just there. Not a well, not there, a word. You know, <clears throat> but it was very interesting that she was so angry. She was so angry, that and they would if you remember, it... she everyone else was fine, but she didn't really like to talk to me for the rest of the trip. It was very yeah. odd. Yeah, I know she was. It was silly, really, but um, but it, we did have a lovely time. We, I think, we had a really <laughs> great time. Well, we looked very happy and very well. I know in that photograph. So we I did. Presume we just and very young. I know. Were we sweet? I know. What are you doing now? I know you're doing your podcast. I'm doing my podcast that you're going to come on soon. Yeah, and are you still modelling? We won't repeat ourselves. No, no, no. But <laughs> also, we might. We might. You see, the thing is, we have probably have different audiences. Yeah, we do. I'm sure we do. Yeah? So we can. Matt thinks we do. <laughs> um, what else am I doing? Um, well, it's interesting. We, were, we had a meeting the other day, and we were, we were just all saying... How all the plan, you know, the greatest plans of mice and men, right? Yeah. All kind of came to a halt. They had at the to. Beginning of 2020. Yeah. yeah. When life changed, you know, forever, really. I mean, I hopefully. Feel, I it feel will, it'll never be the same again. I don't think weird. it'll be 100% the same again. And it makes me sad for, for younger people, really. But everybody's so completely different, and particularly young people now. You know, they're very woke and they're very oversensitive about everything. Yeah, that's true. And I thought, how odd. I feel that there's been a huge cycle. Because in the 60s, we broke away, and we wanted freedom, we fought for it, and we wore outrageous clothes, short dresses, and artists painted yeah. outrageous things. Filmmakers started be, being totally free. There was a freedom suddenly. Yeah, there was. I feel that cycle is now coming to an end, and the freedom is being taken away. Yeah. Well, Can everyone we... is frightened to say anything, to exactly. do anything. Completely opposite yeah, in the I 60s mean, I, where we were brave yeah. and we could say and do I, anything. I agree to a certain extent with some of the things that have changed. But I think, like everything, it goes a step too far. And now Until people it meets have, its middle you know, ground. Yeah, it's got to. Yeah. You know, it's... But anyway, so we, we were just saying at this meeting that all the things that we were planning to do at the beginning of 2020 just stopped because yeah. obviously nobody could go anywhere or do anything. Yeah. But I think it seems to be slowly coming back. So, I mean, like you, I don't think this virus will ever go away. Absolutely. But I've, I, I, we've been really careful. We just isolated for almost a year. Well, completely. we did. We did. Rod couldn't bear it when we first came down from London on the 18th of March, the year before last. That's right. I said, this is it, Rod. And he was so stressed out yeah. with the idea of not being able to go and have lunch every day with his friends in London. I know. Not able to go to bars, you know, that he took himself to bed with a thermometer. <laughs> And watched BBC. He had man course, flu. He had man flu. He wouldn't get up for and five days. And we all days. know that man flu is much worse than woman flu. <laughs> A hundred times worse. 
But he wouldn't get up. He was convinced he was going to get it. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. But I think it's because he was upset that he yeah. wouldn't be able to go and well, play it, uh, listen, all the time. When that all started, I was frightened, weren't you? Because, you know, we're all yes. in a certain age group. Yeah. As young as we are, we are in a certain age group. And, you know, we, we quite rightly had to be careful. Very careful. I know. And we were. And yeah, I still we, am. Oh, we were. We, I, I, still, I still think everyone should wear masks. You see, I and agree. I do. Yeah, tragic. I feel London is opening up. It's never going to be the same as, you know, B.C., before no. COVID. Yeah, BC. It's funny it's BC, isn't it? <laughs> but how did you cope kind of mentally through the lockdown? Did you cope or...? Well, I coped and I realised that I had a huge amount of energy and nowhere to... Didn't know what to do with all my energy. I felt wonderful. And I was making big lunches for Rod every day. <laughs> <laughs> and then a girlfriend of mine, Adina Ronnie, oh, yes. whose father was a re renowned chef, said to me, phone me and say, oh, what are you making for lunch today? I'm fed up. I don't know what to cook anymore. And I thought, oh, I'm taking photographs of everything I cook. I'll do a podcast. Yeah, Lockdown exactly. lunches. So I became creative and, you know, really thought about what I'm going to cook every day. And then Matt and I did all these um, yeah, no, podcasts. Some, I, I tried so some I was really know, good. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, it gave me... Because I was locked down, it gave me an energy and, and a creativity yeah. to do something well, same, within it. Same with me. Yes. The hardest thing for me and for Lee was not seeing our grown-up children and our, more importantly, our grandchildren. Well, this is what every, all my friends oh. who have children, they all say the same thing. How sad it was and how tragic that they couldn't see their grandchildren. Oh, it was, it children. was almost a physical pain. Yeah. It really, for me, I, yes. I mean, I talk to them every day and... But it's not the same. But you see, me not having children, but I have Freddie, my dog. He loved lockdown. Oh, of course. Because we, we didn't go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> he had our undivided attention every single day and <laughs> night. <laughs> so you loved it, Fred. But that was the hardest for me because Carly, uh, my daughter, had given birth about a month before to a new little boy. Oh. So I did get to see him, little Theo, but only twice and then lockdown. Wow. So, so happy families now, Twigs. Oh, yes. Good, good. Yes. Sweetie, tell me, what was the last modelling job you did? Do you remember? The last modelling job I did. Well, oh, you did that big campaign, I, didn't you? I did. For, for what? Marks and Spencer's, didn't oh, you do that? Oh, that. that. Yeah, that's that a long time ago. Yeah, no, that finished about two years ago. Three years ago. Two years ago. Great. Well, I went in to do one year. That was in, that was 14 years before it finished. <laughs> we did 14 wow, years, wow. which was fabulous. I loved it. But then they had new managing directors and they had, and then COVID hit. So, yeah. and things changed. I mean, I was lucky it went on for 14 years. Very lucky. I Very nice. It. Very and, nice. Uh, but last year, actually in the middle of, it wasn't lockdown, but it was before Christmas when they stopped to seeing each other again. I did do, I got a, I was a bit nervous because um, we hadn't had our jabs. Mm. But they called to say, would I do a cover story for Greek Vogue? Oh, really? And it's very hard to say no to a Vogue cover. Oh, I totally <laughs> I agree with you. I haven't been on one for a few years. So, That's um, so funny. Yeah. And so they, they promised me. I said, look, I am a bit nervous, you know. And they said, everyone will be tested, including myself. We all did lateral flow tests. Yeah. Everyone wore masks except me, because obviously I couldn't be photographed. <laughs> Um, I dress myself. My hair and makeup, I, I, I always use, and I know them really well, and yeah. they've been tested, so they, they could make me up and do my hair. Although, I, I mean, if push came to shove, I can make my... I think we all, you know, nowadays, we made ourselves up. Twiggy, there were no makeup no. artists then. People we did our laugh own... when I told I know, that. I know, because we did our own makeup, and yeah. when we were working together for Italian Vogue, yeah. we'd copy each other's yeah. eye makeup. Yeah. You know, looking like in those photos down there. I know. Do you remember oh, those? I do. They're so sweet. Um, They're and gorgeous. We, and we did actually. our own hair. Yeah. I mean, when we were modelling, we did everything. I can remember usually having a hairdresser because the guy who cut my hair in that little urchin cut was Leonard. Dear yes. Poor Leonard, who's not with us anymore. But um, but makeup. I mean, I think the first time I had a makeup artist 
was Barbara Daly. She was the first one. But that wasn't until the no. probably late 60s, early 70s. Early 70s. I, I can remember from when I started modelling in 66, if you got a booking, like you turned it, if they wanted you there at 8.30, you turned up, turned up, made up. Yeah. and ready to shoot yeah and i used to carry hair pieces with me and a dark yeah. wig for just oh, in case oh, i didn't do that oh i went because i tilt. had that little <laughs> you went full <laughs> tilt oh god yeah so funny those are the funny days and but then... it's so funny when you talk to makeup artists now they can't believe it what you did all that makeup yourself yeah I and mean, they, they turn up with huge bags now, I know. full of makeup and, and brushes. And most young models today can't do makeup. They can't do their own makeup. Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> We're oldies but goodies. Go, we certainly are. <laughs> Tried and tested. <laughs> oh, gosh. That was so fun. I'm not, certainly not ready to retire. I wouldn't like to do anything full, full time again. No. Like twenty four seven, but no. then I never did. Did you? I mean, no, because it was so, so random. When I look at my diary now, um, I, I notice you know I was working from eight thirty till twelve, yeah, and then there'd be afternoon off, and then the next day it would be all day, yeah. You see, so yeah, it just changed. It was never the yeah. same. And also, in you know, because I I kind I kind of stopped modelling really in nineteen seventy. When I did the, you know, 69, when I did the boyfriend with Ken Russell. Oh, yeah. Because I made the decision then that I... Finish. I, well, like, you know, in those days, I thought, because Ken cast me in the boyfriend, we shot it in 69, so it came out 70, I think. And to me, it was like entering this... I'd never thought of acting or performing. Ah. And... I, it was like, I will say it was like going into the secret garden. It was like, oh, my God, this is... Brilliant! I love it. I loved it. I loved working with Ken. I loved all the because when you do a film or a TV thing or a, a theatre piece, you know you get so close. You become like a family, and I yeah. loved all that. It was yes. so lovely, and all the actors were so lovely to me, and looked after me. And because I was a bit nervous, because I've never. Done of course, before. it's a new, completely new area and, and adventure. But for because you. and when I did it, and when the film came out, to you know, it did very well, and it got mostly nice reviews again your life changes because I was getting calls saying do you want to do another film do you want to? and I got a tv series and so I made the decision because obviously I was only 20 wow so I could have gone on modeling for ages and um and I thought now what do I do? you know I, this is what I want to do now that I've, I've found this new path do I concentrate on that or do I try and do both. And in those days, there was that kind of stigma, you know, that models are a bit thick and stupid. And, yes. And, and couldn't act, wouldn't, yeah. couldn't be movie stars. It wasn't so bad in America because there were people like Lauren Hutton. Yes. Who, uh, lots of them. Andy McDowell. They, yeah. She was later. But Lauren Hutton's about our era. And they were doing films. Susan Saradon was a model. Of course. There's quite was. a few. But in America, they're much more open to you doing different things yes I mean you have to do it well they'll yeah, yeah, shoot you down if they don't like you well quite but, right <laughs> yeah but they give you the shot whereas I think in England it's it's slightly harder because they kind of label you I think you're in a model, England you're everything you're a singer you're a comic you're a straight actor yes yeah but yeah. um it's funny English so attitude. I made that decision rightly or wrongly so I didn't actually model proper not model model I did shots for things I was promoting. Yes. Um, but I probably didn't model again until properly. I got a call in the early 90s from Stephen Mizell, who is wow. one of the great American yes. photographers, I think, saying, could he do a 10-page spread for Italian Vogue? Again, Vogue. How could I say no? <laughs> Especially Italian Vogue. Yeah. I think it's the best Vogue, actually. I think it's actually. the best Vogue. So I flew to New York and... Um, and did that, and that was a 10-page spread. So, so that was really my first modelling job, purely modelling, for 20 years. So, but I did, I did enjoy it. So occasionally, you know, I do them. Yeah. Uh, I well think done. I've got one coming out in January in England for good housekeeping. They're doing, they've got a 100-year anniversary. Right. So each month they're doing a different kind of well-known person on the front. So I miss January. Oh, gosh, get you. <laughs> but 
I'm fully clothed. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is good housekeeping. Uh, yes, it is. I don't know what you like to wear when you're <laughs> housekeeping. <laughs> Oh, it could have been a penny. It could just. <laughs> oh, golly. What's funny about when when I flew in to do the, the pictures with Steve and Mizell. Yeah. And he, I don't know whether you've ever met him, but he's no. very sweet and quite shy, actually. And I was thrilled because I loved his work. And I got to the studio in New York and he hadn't, he wasn't there. I was in having my hair done and my makeup done and everything. And then he arrived and he came in and to say, and I said, oh, it's so lovely to meet you and thank you. I'm so thrilled to be doing this. It's lovely. And he said, well, actually, we've met before. And I said, oh, God, and I was slightly embarrassed because I didn't remember. And I said, oh, God, how embarrassing. And he said, no, you wouldn't remember. He said, he said when I was 13 and you'd just arrived in New York, so it must have been... 67, and you know, I was all over the newspaper because I, I went in, I was part of the British invasion, I went in after the Beatles, right? And, yes, and, um, so it was all madness. And, and he said, We'd me and my friend had seen you on TV arriving at Kennedy Airport, oh, it was Idlewild then, I think, but became Kennedy Airport. He said, We decided we were going to come and meet you. <laughs> How sweet. And he said, he said we, we were in New Jersey and they, got, they took the day off school yes. and they came over to Manhattan and they found out who I, who I, I was working with, a wonderful photographer called um, Melvin Sokolsky. One I of remember the, him. Another great photographer. Yeah. And they found his studio. They rang the doorbell. And my stylist for that shoe, it must have been for in American Vogue, it was, was a young girl called Ali McGraw. No. Before she became an actress. Interesting. Because she was a little bit older than me. And um, so she must have been, I was like 17. She was probably in her early 20s. Yeah. And she was the stylist for the shoot. And she went down and tried to get rid of them because they said, we've come to meet Twiggy. (laughs) 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 And she said, go away. And at the time, another amazing photographer called Bert Stern Remember him? Was shooting a documentary on my trip to New York. Was he? For NBC, I think, or CBS, one of them. And the cameraman overheard the conversation, said, no, bring them in, it would be great footage. So the little boys were led upstairs to the... I don't remember any of this, I have to say. Yes. (laughs) But he does, because, you know... Of course. It's his story. Yeah, it's his story. So they came up, and I said, oh, God, I hope I was nice to you. And he said, yeah, you were, you were really nice. And he said, we took... I think they took little snaps because it was, you know, pre-mobile phone. Yeah. And I signed some pictures for them. And he said, on the way back, he said, we got on the ferry to go back to New Jersey. And then we panicked because we'd been filmed. They didn't use it in the documentary. That's a shame. That would have been lovely. It's somewhere out there. It would be more interesting, even more interesting now. Oh, I know. Wouldn't it? As he said, Well, there is loads of footage that's never been seen. But anyway... So they got on the ferry and they were panicking because they thought if that went out, they'd get into trouble with their mum and dads because they played hooky from school. Oh, I see. (laughs) And then Stephen said, I turned to my friend and said, because he said, I always knew I wanted to be a photographer. And he said, I turned to my friend and said, one day I'm going to photograph her. Unbelievable. all those years later. I love that that story. story? That is fabulous. (laughs) Oh, he was so lovely. That is so good. And they were great. He took great pictures. Twigs, just one thing I remember. When I was talking to um, Jodie Kidd, who oh, yeah. lives near here, she has the most fantastic pub restaurant. Oh, does she? Yeah. Oh, and anyway, when oh, we were she's talking... she's such a lovely oh, she's girl. she's adorable. Oh, I'd like to see her. When we were talking, um, I don't know whether it's me or whether it was her who mentioned the most fantastic makeup that you did or you had... Oh, no, that was... For the Bowie yeah, um, no, I, album cover. Yeah, that was cover. done. Can you tell me about that? It's awful because I cannot remember the name of the makeup artist. Uh, What? Yeah, the story to that was um, it was English Vogue. It was meant to be. They called and said, and you've got to remember that when we shot that cover, which probably was, God, my timing, probably in the early seventies. Right. David Bowie was huge. Huge, and I was obsessed with it I thought he was absolutely brilliant still do and uh, well I think he blew everyone away didn't he oh totally totally 
He was so unique. Anyway, I got this call from English Vogue saying they wanted to do a photo of myself and him for the cover of English Vogue. Right. Which we thought, oh, and I was like, oh, I'm going to meet David Bowie. And uh, <clears throat> so we flew to Paris. But what had happened, David had, he, he'd been on holiday. So, no, other way around. I'd been on holiday, so I was really tanned. Yeah. And he, as normal, he was very, very pale. Yeah. And we wanted to do it bare shoulders, just head and shoulders. And so the makeup artist had this idea, because I had a very tan shoulders, David had very white shoulders, so he, he did this uh, thing with the makeup like a mask. Like a mask. And so on my brown body, he made my face very pale, and on Bowie's, he made his face much more suntan, and that's where you get those two colours. And it was beautiful makeup, actually. It was actually. stunning. Beautiful It was makeup. so It's one of the different. great makeup things. It was actually. classic. I mean, I it's... think it was probably the guy, the person who did... Do you remember the zigzag, the lightning flash? Yes, yes. Um, I'm sure. I think it, it was probably Bowie's makeup person. But you he, see, was he was brilliant. very influenced by Japan. Yeah. Anyway, wasn't he? Anyway, we there? did the shot. Everyone was so excited. And he was in Paris uh, recording Pinups, uh -huh. the album. <laughs> and um, I was just so thrilled to meet him, and he was so gorgeous and so lovely and so kind of bright. And oh, he was an amazing human being. And came back to England. We just presumed it would come out in a few months' time. Like, and then we got a call from Vogue saying the editor has decided it, we can't use the picture because. We cannot put a man on the cover of Vogue. <laughs> Hello. What year was that? Probably 72. Unbelievable. 72, when it, whenever Pinuts came out. I Unbelievable. Know. And I said, are you crazy? You've got the most famous man probably at the moment in the world. And they turned it with down. With makeup. You can even credit the makeup. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they wouldn't budge. <gasps> so David said, well, don't. And I was really upset because it was such a gorgeous picture. And he said, well, don't worry. Can I use it for my album cover? There. So actually, it's had a much longer life because yes. every time Pinups is re-released in a different format, it comes out again. Good. Well, darling, I'm going to say thank you very much for doing this podcast with me. Well, thank you for having me. And I look forward to doing yours. Yes, we'll, we'll do that very soon. And cheers again. Cheers, darling. Finish off our margaritas. Mm. And, and we're only twice. having one today, aren't we? Because we're so good. Well, that was great. I really want to thank Twiggy so much for telling me such wonderful, amusing, great stories and us both remembering funny things that we don't normally think about. So, Twigs, thank you very much. Yeah, great episode. Amazing stories. I mean, it's amazing that... You guys are still friends after all these years and you share all these different stories and your, your, your paths have crossed in, in different uh, scenarios and just wonderful to kind of reflect on, on some of that. It was, it was really very, very cool. It was fun. So, it yeah. was great. Very I enjoyed good. it. Very good. So we really hope you enjoyed that episode. If you did, please uh, leave a thumbs up if you're watching on YouTube and uh, it'd be great if uh, you want to leave a review on, on Spotify or, or Apple uh, Music. Um, we'd really appreciate that. It really helps out the podcast. And uh, if you want to stay connected with um, the podcast and everything that Patty's doing, check out pattyspodcast.co.uk um, for all of the previous episodes. And uh, we've had some amazing guests uh, on this season. And um, although season two is coming to an end, uh, we're starting to put plans in place for season three, which is really exciting. And uh, we're hoping to take that to the next level. And um, it's, going to be, it's going to be a great, great season. So I'm looking forward to it. Are you looking forward to it? Me too. Me too. Excellent. So until then, uh, we'll see you all next time. Bye.